Not until the present graveyard comes into view would an approaching stranger realize that a village exists here at all. And yet only a few yards further is suddenly exposed the Church of St. Catherine, which has remained Teversal's central feature since Norman times. An opportunity to reflect on some of that 800 years history is afforded the visitor during this, the occasion of the church's spring flower festival. Teversal was no exception to the manorial way of life of the Middle Ages, when the structure of society hinged on the lord of the manor. And of the six families who have inherited the title since Doomsday Book, at least three have left permanent record here in the church of their prominence. In 1562, the death of Roger Greenhalge marked the end of one such family, and it was he who requested his body to be laid in the south aisle near the altar, where this alabaster grave slab for he and his wife marks the spot. The reference to an altar suggests the possible site of a lady chapel at that time, at the western end of which is now erected this tablet, recording the name of the family most recently associated with the manor. temporarily displayed in support of the festival are part of a collection which is to be used to illustrate a book on the subject and the art is here being demonstrated by the exhibitor Mr. W. Clay Dove as he takes an impression of a brass coffin plate from the Molyneux vault. The Molyneaux were perhaps the most renowned of all the Teversal families. They claimed to be directly descended from the Lords of Molyneaux in Normandy. And here there is certainly much in evidence of their 250 years residence. As shown by these fine mural tablets on the chancel walls, it was an era which spanned such titled lives as baronets and knights, and which ended with the death of Sir Francis Molyneaux the seventh baronet, and also for 47 years gentleman usher of the Black Rod. His remains, along with those of his ancestors, are laid in the family vault situated under the south side of the nave.
with the constant desire for each successive generation to contribute to its church, some more recent gestures have yet to assume historical importance. Others already provide an interesting record of the ever-changing fashions of the ages. For instance, in the interests of good taste, the once protruding tongues of these carvings were removed at the request of Lady Carnarvon, hence the reason for the open mouths. The statue of St. Catherine looks out towards this unique collection of hatchments, relics of the ceremony formerly attached to the funerals of persons entitled to bear arms. Again on the south side, this Italian wall plaque, a gift from Lady Carnarvon, is closely marked by the relatively obscure face of a monkey carved on a nearby pillar. The secret of its intent remains undisclosed. The Coptic processional cross is said to be one of only two of its kind in the country, while at the west end, this new memorial door leads to the tower, which itself was only a 15th century addition to the original building. As early as 1610, the church registers reveal references to coal mining in the district. In 1619, a collier was interred after being slain in a coal pit road. Yet with the collieries virtually on its doorstep, the village has remained almost unspoiled. Little wonder then at its apparent literary attractions. By inference, it fits the setting of a story by one local author, D. H. Lawrence. And is it coincidence that two Molyneux Christian names, Francis and Vivian, combine to form the name of another? Another entry in the registers describes three burials as a result of the Great Plague of the 17th century. but not so explicit on the cause of death is this colliery engineer's stone. The local story infers some involvement with the lady by whom he came to be buried after reputedly falling down a pit shaft. Close by, the former importance attached to the role of church organist is exemplified by this 19th century headstone. Of the structural changes made to the building, the addition of the tower gave it one of its most striking features in that its north and south walls were built over part of the nave arcade, a peculiarity shared by only one other church in the deanery, that of Skegby. In the wall of the north aisle, the square manorial type windows are characteristic of the 16th century and are said to come from Hardwick Old Hall. Though adjacent to these, the age and original purpose of this lintel doorway can be no more than conjecture, opinion based on inadequate evidence, which is after all the very essence of history's fascination, 
and just one of the many attractions of Tevisel's parish church of St Catherine.